record. Here we go. All right, welcome live and uh, archived viewers of the very first Spark BizTech webinar where we review various business technologies and productivity technologies, even if you don't have a business, um, that will help you to maximize your time, to help you expand and reach your connection in terms of your business and allow you just to be really productive and get your magic out there. So what we're gonna be looking at today, what you're seeing right now, a very big blank screen of, is called Trello. It's about to get populated in a way that looks really cool. And it's a, pro a collaborative project in action. I like to use the word action over task. Task just sounds too tasking and stressful, so I call them actions. Um, management software. And so the collaborative part means that you can invite other people to work with you. You can tag people. You can comment. You can look at histories of how things evolve. Um, you can have administrative privacy settings in terms of who can see what. and um, the project management and the listing and the actions is what we're about to jump into here soon. But for right now, I um, just want to welcome you and thanks for joining. Um, for the December classes, um, these, this one, which is, what, the day, what is the day today? December 8th. And the one that is uh, two weeks from now, the 22nd, these ones are free. And then starting January, they are a paid class series unless you are already a coaching client of mine, part of the Spark Group program, then they are included. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And we've already gone through how to um, deal with the call. So when you do join a live call, you'll you'll learn about all that stuff. Um, but all right, so let me introduce you to some of the basic features of Trello. What you're looking at right now is called a board. So each of these sort of big blank boards is called a Trello board. And we can change how the, the background of the board looks. We can make it a different color. We can even make it fancy with having uh, a photo in the background. Um, but for now and for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and just keep it a nice green color. And the way I did that, by the way, is on the right-hand side, you'll see a little thing that says show menu. When you click on that, that allows you to um, add other team members, if you have, team, have added team members to that particular board, and it allows you to do some other things that we'll go into later, but we just did the change background. So, Trello boards are made of lists, and we obviously have no lists. I called this board uh, the exciting name of Demo, but we're going to add a list, and we're gonna call it our first list. Please give it a title, press save, and it lets you know it's ready to start adding more lists if you want. But we're gonna just do this one here. And then within a Trello uh, list are cards. So we'll say our first card. And it looks like this, this boring little thing. But do not be fooled because if you click on that, you'll now find that you can add all kinds of great things to a Trello card. You can, uh, let's start off actually by giving it, hmm, let's give it some, let's add a member. Let's say since the only member here is me, I'm gonna say that I am the member of, I'm, I'm, I can see this, this, this list. I'm gonna add a comment here, I'm gonna say, wow, I wonder what a comment does. Well, you can obviously, you can just do leave little comments, but you can also add file attachments from Dropbox and Google Drive and other places from your computer. You can also, um, the similar to Twitter where you and Facebook where you use an at, you can use an at sign, and if there are more people on your team, you can leave an at and say the person so that they get tagged to make sure they look at that comment. You can do little silly emojis and things like that. And you can also, add attachments to other cards. Now we're not gonna be able to do very much in this one yet because this is a big boring, um, big fat boring um, Trello board, but I'm gonna switch over to one that has a lot more stuff going on so you can see later. But I just wanted to show you what a really boring Trello board looks like if you were to start from scratch. But now let's start looking at what it can, can look like. So as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, there's an icon that shows you all the boards that you're a member of. 
And at the very top, any ones that you have starred show. So I probably have about 20 different uh, Trello boards. And the one that is my main one for my work uh, is called, says Plurk It Baby. <laughs> so uh, those of you that know me I know that I use the word Plurk to describe play, learn, and work. Playing, learning, and working is kind of the mentality I like to go into with my work. So loading onto the screen now, you should see a nice little cosmic background. And um, I actually have a lot more here, but I feel my, my real one has this much busyness going on. But I use something called a filter. So I'm only showing you what are my top treasures for the week and other actions that I've decided I wanna focus on for the week. As you can see, these little colors are called labels. So you can, if you have a lot of noise, a lot of cards going on, and you wanna just focus on certain things, you can create your own labels by color and then add them to the cards to say what you wanna focus on. So I created ones for this group of tasks called my top treasures are the things I really wanna at the end of the week say, yay, I got those treasures done. This week are the things I wanna focus on for the week. Orange is sort of a caution sign of like, hey, I need to get some support on that topic. Red are the things that like someone, you know, is dependent on me. We tend to use, have an energy with our actions. I've found in, in doing a lot of project task management where we feel things are urgent. And the ones that I've found that feel urgent tend to be because someone else is relying on us. We've made a promise or a commitment. And so I kind of have decided to use the color red for that for myself. Purple means I'm waiting for someone else to get back to me. And blue is that the project is, pro is uh, paused. Now I won't go into this now. But I also have, as you can see, labels for the type of activity. So is something a creative process? Is it an errand that allows me, for example, if I tag all of my actions that are errand focused and I just want to see those, then when I'm out driving about, I can just say, hey, show me my errand focused actions and it will show me those. Or if I'm in a creative mode or a reflective thinking mode or a technical fixing mode, I can choose that. This is something that is uh, part of the GTD, getting things done system. I won't go into it now, but I found that it's really effective. One other cool thing, and I'll show where you can set this up later. If you assign due dates to each of these cards and you've activated the um, power up, we'll talk about power ups later. Um, they're, uh, they're here. Um, of a calendar, you can actually have another view where you click calendar and any actions that have due dates will show up in a calendar. Really cool. Now, I'm not actually using this as much as I probably could because I like to use my own personal calendar, but I think I would like to use it more. You can switch between a week. As you can see, here we are doing the business tech webinar. So I kind of have that highlighted as red. You guys are depending on me. Green and yellow, they're, they're action items. And it has a due date for today. So. I'm going to go away from the calendar mode. And now we're going to start looking at um, the actual cards themselves. Okay, so you now know a board is the big space. A list is one of these columns. A card is one of the blocks that could either be really thin and skinny, or if it has graphics on it, you can add attachments and graphics and documents, then it will be bigger. Um, so it kind of goes from your big view of all of your different boards to a specific board, to a list, to a card within the list, to looking at the details of a list. So now we're gonna look at the details of a list. So um, let's say, okay, so I actually haven't gone through and checked these off. So this is perfect, here we are today. There might be something embarrassing here, but that's okay. So we're looking at my, um, at the business tech webinar project. So as you can see, I've decided to do, you know, these are the topics that I decided. I made a list. And the way, may you make a, the, blah, blah, blah. the way you make a list is to click this one right here that says checklist. And it asks you, what's the name of this checklist? So in this case, I created a checklist called actions, which are kind of to-dos and tech topics. And, um, and so, I did decide the first six topics. Now notice something really cool here, I love this part. It actually will show you the percentage of how far along the project you are, how far along it is, so it kind of gives you a nice little feeling. 
Um, did I invite people to these free ones? Yes. Did I test the screen share option? Yes. Did I create a repeating calendar event for my Spark group people? Yes. Have I created a, a sales page yet? No. Um, have I decided my pricing system for this? No. Have I tested the registration for this system yet? No. So I've got, you know, I've got my few things here, but I can look up and I can see, hey, I'm coming along. Um, and it shows me, you know, the other little steps that I've taken in the past here. Again, we've talked about labels. We've seen them there. Checklist, a due date, which shows that the due date was yesterday. And then, of course, I can add attachments. Now, underneath here, you're seeing something called power-ups. Now, unless you actually have a paid membership, most of these power-ups won't show up. But it does give you a quick sneak preview of what we'll talk about next time or maybe later on. And that is that you can integrate things like uh, directly, you can integrate some of these features into Trello. If you have a MailChimp account or you use Evernote or things like that. But you will have in your account actions. And actions are things that you could do with this card. Let's say, um, so notice that I have this BizTech webinar in a list that I call classes, live and online, okay? Let's say that I want that I realized, you know, that's not really the right category. I'm gonna move that to, well, I'm gonna, let's say I wanna keep it in this board, but I wanna move it to my general marketing or something like that. So it shows me all the different lists that I have in this board and I could move it to, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, or let's say I have a different board and I wanted to move it somewhere else. I could move it to a different board. Now, here's something really cool you can do. You can also copy. Let's say, I, let's say I was working with you, Bhakti, and you were also creating your own webinar, and I was like, I'm gonna be really generous. I'm gonna share all of my details and my template and my outline with Bhakti. So because she is a client of mine, I go up here to her dashboard, and I put it in one of her lists that's relevant, and she now has uh, the card. And I have a choice. Do I keep the checklist and the labels and the comments and everything? Or do I just uh, send the actual card itself? You can also choose where along the priority. You know how there's like a top one, two, three, four list. So you can say where in the list it's going to be. So you can create duplicates of cards. You can also create duplicate. You can copy entire boards. You can actually create entire boards, which was really helpful for me working with my coaching clients because... I created a template with them, and then I was able to copy the entire template, customize it, and invite them into the um, into the <clears throat> into that particular board, which I'll be reviewing with you guys later. Subscribing means that you're going to be getting continual updates about when when things get changed on that board. So let's say you're a member of this board and you wanna know every time that Leaf or someone else um, completes a task or adds a comment or things like that, you'll get a notification. And then lastly, archiving, actually it's not lastly, but you can archive this and, oh shoot, I did not wanna archive it. I thought it was gonna, there we go, okay, great. So it's back, you can archive and completely delete or just basically put it in a category of archive things. Share and more basically allows you, this is a really cool thing you can do. Uh, well, you can print it, you can export it to a certain format that might be imported by other things. You can um, create the link to the specific card, which if you're an Evernote geek, geek, by the way, and you've been making your list in Evernote, that means that you can take the link of that and you could put it in Evernote, you could send it to a friend. Um, so you can create links to boards and to uh, cards and send them to people. And, um, and then I do see your hand, by the way, Carrie, I'm gonna come to you in one second. Um, and then this one is really my favorite, one of my favorite ones. So each card and each list has an email address. So let's say you get an email and it's related to one of your lists, you can forward that email to one of your Trello lists. Let me show, let me see if I can, um, I'm gonna actually, answer Carrie's question then, and then show the example of that. All right, so Carrie, I am unmuting you, I believe. Hold on. 
unmute. Okay. Yes. What's up, Carrie? Um, yeah. On the, the calendar, um, you had said that you don't use the calendar as much because you use your own. Does it integrate with other calendars like Google Calendar or Sunrise? Oh, great question. And I think, I think, I think, I think it might. So that's a really good point. As a matter of fact, have I already done that? Let me open my calendar and see if I have. So what Carrie's asking, in case that was too geek speak for anyone watching this, is that, um, yes. Okay, so look, boom. So if you're looking, oh no, you're not able to see this, are you? Because I only have it sharing. Um, I'm gonna change the screen share so that you are seeing my entire screen. Let me know, Carrie, if, if this shows up. Are you guys yes. now seeing my calendar? Okay, great. Yeah. So notice that this pink one here says Plurk It, and notice that that item is showing up here. So a very, very cool feature. So, so you don't even, in a sense, need to look at that calendar view, and um, that means that you can get the subscription for that calendar, and I'm pretty sure I can find where that is. Yeah. Um, I might, let me see if it's, if it's not here in the settings, that's something I might have to research, but it shouldn't be hard to find. Does that answer okay. your question though, Carrie? Now you know it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah that's very, awesome. So very, very cool feature. So again, for anyone watching, what that means is you can subscribe to the due date version of your Trello items and put that in your iCal if you use a digital calendar and all of those projects will show up in your calendar. And another uh, related geeky note on that, if um, any of you are using um, or have want to use a really great um, calendar for your uh, smartphone, there's one called Sunrise. And it also allows you to subscribe to Trello, um, to Trello and Evernote items that have due dates and they'll show up in your calendar, but that's just a side note. All right, so um, back to looking inside of a particular card. We'll go back to the one we were looking at here. Nope, not that one. Do, 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 here we are. And I think there was one thing. Oh yeah, so what I wanted to show you was how cool it is to be able to send an email. I'm gonna create a new email and I'm gonna say, you guys seeing a, an email here? Oh, that's right, I put you on mute. Okay, you're nodding, thank you. <laughs> Testing Trello. Okay, so watch, because I've put this Trello into my contacts, notice what pops up is um, five or six different places that I've told I wanna be able to send items to. So the one that I find that I've been using most often is to my inbox, to an actual list of my Trello projects. So what I can do is I can click that, because I created a contact for my, um, you know, where, you, where it said you could subscribe to the email address of a list or a card. And I'm gonna say, testing for the BizTech group. Hello, everybody. And I'm gonna send this email. But what I could have done is, let's say an email came into my inbox and I didn't wanna deal with it now, or it was a really action-based email, I could send that to my to-do list, to a particular to-do list. And it, it kind of actionizes it a little bit more, if that makes sense. So let's see how quickly that shows up. If it doesn't show up right away, and I have to turn my filter off, then we'll come back to it later. just so you'll get an example of that, um, how you can email to things. So I'm turning the filtering off, making myself a bit more vulnerable. And okay, it's not shown up there yet, so it probably will take a few minutes. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that stuff later. Okay, so going back to my list here. So we have looked about, um, the cards and how you can leave comments and tags. We've looked at how you can create lists and due dates and labels and add members. Um, attachments, let me actually show you a little bit more about attachments. So let's say 
I had created a document. I'm just going to make find some kind of made up document here. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to find something random. In this case, I'm going to find ah this picture of my um, my wonderful people in the Spark group. And I can just drag and drop a picture, a Word document, whatever I want onto that card. And if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see it says uploading. So that must have been a fairly large picture. So that's why it's taken some time. And one cool thing is that when it's a picture, you actually can use it as, I can't remember what term they use. We'll see it in a second. It's something like, um, it's, it's like a little snapshot picture that will show up on the page like you see here with this one. Um, oh yeah, and I didn't say description. So you can also type the description of a card. This is the project for my business technology webinar series, okay? So that just shows up there if you want a, a basic description. And then anytime you do various activities, so you know when I was when I was sending the card to different boards, it shows up there. When I accidentally kind of archived it, uh, when I created a different when I when it showed when I completed different items, so you get a really detailed history. Um, you can also put links. So here's a really cool thing. I'm going to click on this link, and it's going to show you guys another app that we're actually gonna be learning about later, um, but I use it mainly on my phone, but it does have, this is called an outliner. And so I have a link to all the steps that we are doing today. Wow, I'm really making this, this class transparent. <laughs> so um, that this is called um, outliner, and it's an iPhone and iPad app that I love. The web version is sorta not great, but that you're looking at, but it is a lot easier I find typing on my laptop. That's why I use it. All right, so there we are. We come back and we see the pictures uploaded. And now it's called a cover image, just like in Facebook, right? So it, it automatically assumed that my throwing that picture in there as an attachment was going to be um, a good cover image. So it did it. I could remove the cover image. I could download that file to my computer. I could delete it. So now when I close this, do 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 do. Here we have my four wonderful uh, Spark Group members, or three of them at least, plus me can go back in and I can say remove it as a cover and delete it. So that's how you add attachments. Add attachments by drag and drop or by using one of these little power ups. All right, I need to do a quick time check. Oh, great. And I, this might actually be before going into some more advanced features, this might be a good time. Why don't I do some Q and A's? Cause I know that was a lot of information. So I'm going to go ahead and, say um, if you have a question go ahead and raise your hand and if I um, don't see a question okay <laughs> we'll do uh, you can do both kinds of hands great so I'm going to unmute you Bhakti go ahead what's your question yeah so for the attachments what's the file format requirement does it have to be a jpeg a pdf like what's the anything. range that's possible? anything at all okay um, now there is a difference let's see if we can find it really quickly uh, Trello Pro and basic I I think if my memory serves me correctly, and maybe you guys can be looking on your alternate, um, if you have an iPad with you to see what you're allowed. My memory is that you get like a certain amount of space. Um, let's see if it tells you here. Okay, so, so if you upgrade to business class, There are certain things that you get, like you can have more graphic backgrounds, you have more control over administrative privacy, you get, you get to integrate other third party things. I think there's something about space. I don't see it right here right now, but um, let's do a quick check. Trello uh, attachments space. And if we don't find it here, then I'm gonna just say research that one on your own. But yeah, you can do any kind of format. Okay. Adding attachments to cards. Because right now if I have a file to send someone, I just email them the file. Is there any benefit in doing it this kind of 
rigmarole way. I mean, I realize we're trying to scale up to a larger crowd. So mm -hmm. we're not only managing the people that we work with, but people that work with the people we work with. Yep. I get that this allows us to scale up to a much larger orbit. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it seems like a lot of hassle to do the things I already do. Okay. So what I'm trying to find is um, what might, what benefit or lift might this really give the things I have to do every day so, to motivate gotcha. me to do these extra steps. So uh, first of all, that's a really good question. I'm trying to think if it's one to go into right now. Um, so do, let me just ask you a quick question, Bhakti. Do you use a pro, any kind of project man? What is your sort of project and task management uh, system? Is it paper? Is it in your head? Is it is my there head? It's totally my head, and that's okay. actually something really user friendly for some of our people, like in China and Nigeria, that don't have to go learn a new system. So yes. the fact that I can do everything really simply just through email and text, and yeah. I finally used WeChat, which is the thing in China that everyone uses. Um, just because I have to work with my Chinese people and Facebook doesn't work there. Uh -huh. uh, I'm trying to keep it as simple and as personal as possible with as few links and, yep. you know, services in between. Yeah. But I realize that I'm, I'm limiting myself to the people that I can hold in my head. Gotcha. So you're, so. you're let me answer you in two ways. Um, in terms of, and then we'll probably talk about this more towards the end because it's more sort of a, an yeah. application question, which is a, which I'm going to go into later. Um, but the general answer is this. So, Trello can be used purely by yourself without the collaboration. And my hunch is I'd be really surprised if you want to go where I know you want to go, if you're going to be able to maintain all of the projects and the actions and the things that you need to do in the documents all in your head. So yeah, I, I think them. I would say the first advantage is creating. So, so as you can see, as we're looking right now, I have divided this inbox means things that I've forwarded that have not yet kind of be become a part of a project or a category in my mind, okay? Each of these other lists speak to some either major uh, program that I have or sort of a category of my work. So obviously you know what the Spark Success Group is because you guys are a part of it. This is for any leads. Again, we're just looking at the filtered part here for this week, but any, any, anything that's related to team events that I'm doing or speaking events coming up, this is for any classes, online or offline, and each of these is a project. Um, either different one-on-one -on -one clients, notes to myself for people to follow up with, any general marketing and outreach related projects, any uh, admin, finance type stuff, any business development stuff. Um, and then there's stuff for my Leela cards and Leela retreats and pause projects and things like that. Sort of just a place like, oh, I wanna remember, remember this you know, as my 2017 and beyond. Um, so it helps you to kind of have a filing place in terms of time and category of where your different projects and actions go. Um, and, and if, if it's working for you, if your own system's working for you, then that's great. And then just keep it going. But my hunch is that it's, you're going to get to a place where whether it's this or using something simple like, um, things is another good one, or kind of just a, a general to-do list that has categories. Um, but what's great about starting, you know, a project in, in um, an action management software like this that has the collaborative feature is when you do get to a place where one of your projects also gets complicated enough that you'd want to invite other people on it and you don't have to go back and search in an email and said, who said what and where was that attachment? You get to kind of put all of that stuff in one place. So that's my yeah. short term answer. Yeah, it'd be more interfacing with my American, you know, kind of interns and staff yep. and bringing people in and out easily. Yeah. I just wonder how much time I'm going to have to spend proportionally troubleshooting and translating this for people and then actually well, using it. Maybe you just it. send them, uh, you know, you, uh, you send them. I, I would think for someone who's just a short term, you know, like a really small, like, you know, it's just like a one, one off type project. You wouldn't want to train someone on this or like have them like, hey, can you please use this unless they already are which I'm finding more and more people, a lot of people do use Trello and like it. But um, for someone who's gonna be a more on, ongoing partner, um, it could be a good thing to do. But if okay. not, yeah, use, use a Google Doc, use something collaborative like that, or you know, use your emails or whatever. So I find that I'm 90% is mostly just for myself. But in my case with you guys, it's a great uh, platform for also um, keeping track of tasks when I'm working with my coaching clients.
Yeah, and I'd like to be able to bring in interns. That's my main thing, is to be able yeah. to bring interns in and out porously, you know, use them with what they want to do, and then they can go, and then someone else can come in. And there's no, like, having to train someone in some huge, yep. you know, everything that we are. Right, gotcha. Um, and then, of course, you could send someone this video when it because it's going to be recorded, so, and that'll that'll teach them, too, if you ever want. But um, All right, so uh, do you have any other questions in terms of the features or how-tos and stuff? Bhakti, before I mute you. No, I have to play with it. Is it more Mac or PC compatible or does that matter? Um, no, it's totally cross flat platform. So Mac and PC and Android and iPhone and iPad and all that kind of stuff. That's one of the other cool things that I didn't mention, which is a really important one, thank you, is that all of your information gets synced. So whether you're um, looking at the iPhone app, um, which we, um, I have a really cool way actually should we do that right now? I discovered something really awesome with Zoom, the platform we're using to teach here. And let's see if it works. So in a second, um, tell me if you are seeing my iPhone. Yes. Isn't that cool? So I'm streaming through my laptop, my iPhone here. So for those of you who haven't downloaded like a smartphone app version, you'll now see that that's what we're now looking at. Um, so we are now looking at, in, it slides between each of the lists like this. So I would do the same thing if I went to the classes and open biz tech webinars like we were doing before. We'd see the same. The only difference is that you don't, you have to touch the checklist to see the checklist. And it gives you a nice little view. And you have to touch, of course, if there's anything else like the labels, you go over and you choose your labels there, the due dates or clearing it, and then your whole history and whatever documents and attachments. So um, I guess while I'm here, I'll say a few more things about the iPhone app. Um, you can really quickly use the search and I can find, let's say I wanna find anything where I use the word biz tech and it filters it down so that all the other lists are empty except, to, oh, there it is. So you guys remember that email that I sent to myself? So it's now shown up in my inbox. And there the description says, hello everybody, like I typed in the email. So that converts my email into a card. And then I search through and don't see anything else there. Okay, uh, actually it says three cards, I wonder why. Oh, interesting. Okay. So um, what else can the app do? On the right-hand side, and I didn't show you this on the um, desktop version, but in the, little, the three little dots in the corner there, those are basically all your notifications for this board. So anything, if you have a bunch of other members that's, been, that's happened, it's sort of like your, think of it as your Facebook feed or your Twitter feed for your, um, for your Trello board. And then in the upper left corner, the star allows you to say whether you're going to favorite this board or not. The, the little uh, file cabinet, as you can imagine, is for archiving. The private is to make it uh, what degree of privacy, whether it's just for you or your team, or even open it up to the entire public, which has some really cool possibilities, by the way. And then the little gearbox is things like, what's the name of this thing? What's the background look like? Do I show the card covers? Um, what labels, you know, you can come up with your own label names. Are you subscribed to it? Um, you know, all the other little features that you, can, that you can play with in there. All right, I'm gonna go on and share, I'm gonna go back to our desktop. Um, unless, are there any questions about the um, mobile version? Okay, so play around with the mobile version. I actually like it, to be honest, in terms of um, 
just in terms of user uh, interface, it's really smooth. Uh, there's, it, it's less to look at. Um, I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and go back to our desktop. I am loving Zoom today, I gotta say, because it's all working. And I like when things work. Okay, time check here. We are, oh, thank you. Note from Carrie that says uh, that there is a 10 megabyte attachment limit. And Carrie, does that mean a uh, total 10 megabyte or each of the attachments is 10 megabytes? Did you find that? And I think Carrie will probably uh, type the answer to what she found about that in a second here. And uh, each attachment. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, you know, if, if you're going to put some big giant video, I don't think you'd probably want his attachment anyways. You'd probably put that in Dropbox and then put your link to your Dropbox file, things like that. All right. So some other advanced features. Uh, let's see, 12, four, you know, I'm tempted, tempted, tempted to actually say this, I think information wise, I'm not going to go into the advanced features. I am going to go into a couple application features, and then I'm going to stop the recording and go into my specific spark group and how we're using it. Cause that's for our own private information. So in terms of applications, so those of you wanting to know about how power ups work, kind of power user features, how do you integrate Evernote? How do you use uh, third party things like Zapier to automate uh, your workflow, all that kind of stuff. Um, that'll come up in, um, in the next time. So application wise, we've already seen kind of the main way that I use it. Now you could also use this of course, for your own personal, um, for your own personal to-do list. So instead of doing all these little business areas, um, you know, I've got one for things I want to get and marriage and family and, you know, could just any kind of basic, um, any kind of basic to-do list that you might have. Um, you can obviously do that. Now here is um, what I call my, my client launch pad. This is where the people that are, are my priority that I care uh, about focusing on and that our current clients like these ones here and other kind of clients, this is where the different groups I can quickly say, who are they, where are they, and get to those people really quickly. So it's sort of like an actionized version of a contact list. I guess you could say that. Um, you could then go into maybe one of your projects is so, oops, this isn't a good example. One of your projects is so involved that a list doesn't make sense. You actually want an entire board. So maybe one part of the board is, you know, the research and the notes. One part is, um, you know, the marketing, your marketing list for that particular project. So I have found for a few of my projects, there are places where I want to be able to actually give an entire board for the project. Um, what? Oh, you know, here's an interesting one. I wonder if I have, if I have this one saved, because this was a public one. So this is a really fascinating idea. And I think there's a lot of potential for this. I haven't used Trello this way myself yet, but people are creating. So imagine a Trello page that Oh, darn it. It's not there. I'm not seeing it starred personal boards. I found this really cool one where, where people had basically uh, created lists by category of all these different kinds of technologies. So there was a productivity list. There was, so it basically think of a way of organizing something that you have, or it could be a way, think of like a web page that's more organized and actionable that anybody can look at. Now, obviously the difference when it's public is people can't just, um, unless you set the setting to make it, anybody can mess with it. Um, you keep it private and people are just able to view it and then look at each of the cards. So I wish there was a good example I could do right now. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, 
So, um, and then the last one that I'm not going to show while the recording is on yet, actually, I will show the basic because I have a demo version of it. Okay, so you could create a template. So in my case, um, as those of you that are live on the call now know, I work, um, part of what I do is work with coaching groups and one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. And I keep, I keep a really holistic approach and we do a life wheel looking at different areas of people's lives. And then we, um, what I decided to do was to create a Trello board in which each of the lists had to do with an area of our life. So when I'm working with my coaching clients and, and the ones that are on now, we're going to go into more detail on this. And we come up with projects that are related to them being accountable to those areas. I add uh, we or I or they go ahead and add a card and there might be certain actionable items to that. I also have a place where our coaching sessions are tracked. They can go back and look and have a record of that and where the basic resources that we use for um, coaching um, are kept. And then a little thing I call a golden thread, which is just a, a catch place for anything that stands out. Um, the golden thread to me is when you're in life and you see something that sparkles to you, you don't know why, but you know it's important for you, a job title, a picture of something, a relationship. It's a little catch place where you can put anything in there, a little, a little clipboard that gives you a hint to where you're being called in your life. So we have covered many, many different things here in the Trello basics about how a whole board works, how a list works, how a card works, and how inside of a card are the action lists, are the comments, the due dates, the labels, attachments, how you can forward them uh, from an email, um, and how you can add members, and a little bit of the administrative side. We'll go into more detail on that next time. Um, and how you can move and copy and archive. And we've looked at the mobile version. We've looked at how you can change the background, how you can look at calendars and even subscribe to calendars. Thank you, Carrie. And, um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna now actually stop the recording to say thank you for joining the call. I'll just lastly say, um, please join us the next time if you wanna go into some more of the advanced features and just have more of a Q&A time. And then also starting January, I'm gonna be starting this as a paid offer. Um, I will leave um, in the description of this video, I will leave the link to the description of uh, the business webinar, but it's basically going to be twice a month, the um, second and fourth Tuesdays of the month from 12 to one o'clock. And um, all of the pricing and the details and how that work will be on that page. So thanks so much for joining. And I'm going to turn off recording and just come here to my wonderful Spark group and boop, boop, boop. Bye-bye. You can find out more about me at sparkinteraction.com and spark, sparkguy.com, by the way. Ciao.